All right. Everybody's afraid. Everybody's worried. Everybody's nervous, anxious, paranoid. Uh, uncertainty is, is abounding. And where does that leave us? As mothers and wives, I believe that we are susceptible to worry a little bit more than men. I'm not sure if it's that, if that, if that's the case or not, but I believe in my, in my own experience that to be the case. And what do we do? Do we become paralyzed by fear and, and not be able to live any longer in any kind of quality of life? I hope not. There's a few things that, that I wanted to share with you on a little bit um, longer video than the one I just made for my, my little channel. And um, one main thing that is helping me because I am prone to to worrying and to to being fearful. I always have been since I was a little kid. I don't know why, but um, I want uh, I want to start with get, getting outside. Be, being outside, and where I live, it's it's starting to really bl blossom into springtime here. Um, you know, I'm not really sure up north <laughs> if you're if you're getting a whole lot of sunshine yet, but um, you probably are. Um, it might still be cold, but there's there's sun out there. Um, get some vitamin D. Uh, it's very 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 good for mentally and and physically and spiritually and everything else. Being outside, fresh air, and vitamin D. And with all that's going on and the uncertainty of even our um, our economy and and our food supply, grow a garden, plant some seeds. And, and grow some food, grow as much food as you can. And so not only are you going to be preparing your household um, for the, the hard times that might be coming or that are definitely coming, um, you're going to be getting the vitamin D, you're gonna be getting your hands in the dirt where there's studies done that the, there, there's microbes in the dirt that actually are like antidepressants and you're gonna be becoming you're going to be exercising, so that's also going to be stimulating all kinds of healthy um, systems in your body. And, and we all know this, exercise and fresh air are, are good for you. And um, so that's my number one thing is grow some food, grow a garden, um, plant some stuff. And it, it will amaze you once you get out and start working in, in the sun how much your your spirit will be lifted and you um you will be more optimistic and um i think i think that's a a win-win all around so what else can we do um what i've been doing recently is trying to play some music and i'm not i'm not a big music person but I've been getting into um, some gospel music, some going back to my roots, um, some old time hymns and stuff. You know, there are such powerful, powerful um, words and, and scripture in those old, old hymns and, and um, truth. And so you can get those. Reading the Bible doesn't have to be boring, you know, <laughs> uh, worship and, and all that is, you know, that's part of taking your your focus off of yourself and your immediate surroundings and putting it on the big picture you know this is um this is not about me this is this is about you god this is this is your world and you're in control and um there's a cat that is running into this tripod i think it's working for somebody else right now that does not want me to make this video <laughs> um but gospel music and whatever your flavor is you know uh, play it and and use it to to disconnect from the crazy and um, and to, to reshift your focus to to the heavenly and sing uh, singing is so good for us and and dance and laugh and enjoy the people that you are probably the closest people to you that you're you're sequestered with right now um your family your children 
um, laugh and, you know, we, we hear laughter do with the, what is it? Merry heart do with good like medicine. You know, it's a proverb. So, you know, be, be, um, joyful. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, all these promises and all these, all these verses that we can, that we can hold on to and that we can, um, to focus our attention on instead of the, the fear and the panic. Um, a lot of these lessons I had to learn with my last pregnancy, and that was because it was an unassisted pregnancy and an unassisted birth. I never once went to a doctor, and um, the enemy really likes to plague me with doubt when it comes to pregnancies and births, and, and this was so with all of them, and it was a really uh, a, a test for me to, to be able to let go of control, because no matter what, it... it you know, it comes down to control. We as humans want to control, um, but we're not in control. God is in control. And, and the sooner we realize that, the better. And we can, we can release our fear and our anxiety knowing that he is in control. And, and at the end of the day, what happens is, is because that's, that's what he wants to happen. And, um, you know, it does no good to worry about tomorrow. You know, today has enough worries of its own, right? You know, we've got to get through today. But, um, you know, a couple of things that helped me with, with my pregnancy and, and my, the up, thinking about the upcoming birth was when I thought that I was, I was getting stressed out, having anxiety, um, I would drink a big glass of water and I would lay down for a minute Um try to close my eyes and, and rest. And, and usually whatever was bugging me, you know, whether it was, you know, real or, or pretend in my head, you know, and, and, uh, anxiety and a panic, panicky feeling, panic attack or whatever, it would, it would release, it would go away. Um, and so I think, uh, that's another tip is, is a lot of times, um, a lot of our symptoms that we might be feeling, um, our dehydration, I think dehydration has a lot to do with stress, um, and vice versa, I guess. But, um, yeah, so I would, I would just drink some water and then I would, I would, I would try to, to recenter myself, um, to, to lay down and rest and breathe. Um, so that's another tip that, that just came from, um, that learning experience with that pregnancy and birth and, and really just, um, learning how to trust and give up control because certain things in life are, are just not, it's not possible to try to control anyways. Um, what else? Oh, so, um, practical tips for beating any kind of virus is, uh, vitamin C high dose vitamin C. It's been proven. Look into, uh, Suzanne, Dr. Suzanne Humphreys. If you want to learn more, um, a lot of people I think that watch this probably are already on board with the whole vitamin C thing, but, um, yeah, it, and so get yourself some sodium ascorbate is what she recommends. And, you know, you just have that on your shelf. And once you start feeling a little tickle in the back of your throat or a little sniffle, you just start dosing yourself. Um, they are having very, very good luck with it in, in this, these corona cases. So um, not really something you're going to hear mainstream media. But I actually wouldn't know that because I don't watch mainstream media. So um, I try not to watch any of the news or, you know, all the, the fear mongering and all that. You know, I have my few that I follow and, and that's about it. And I, I look for um, updates from the revolting man. You know, if he's got something important to tell me, he'll tell me. Um, other than that, I try to not, not get too involved with it. And, um, and that leads me to my last point. Um, lean on your husband. He is equipped to deal with this kind of stuff by God. This is part of his role as a husband and part of your role as a wife to, um, to defer to him, to, uh, to rely on him. And he, hopefully is, is, um, it's taking on that role 100%, you know, I mean, uh, a lot of people might not be in that place as far as their marriage is concerned. And, um, for those people, you know, you, I guess 
you lean you lean on God in in those circumstances and um, but for those of us who are in uh, biblical marriage lean on your husband he's that's his that's his job he is the protector um, you don't have to worry about about things um, you let him do it you know he's he's got the equipment for it he's got he's he's equipped by God to to take on those big issues but um, what was it? Where was I going? I am so sorry. I totally lost my train of thought. Yeah. So a, cu- a couple of examples of this, I, again, I use from, um, pregnancy and birth and, um, even before then, the first time, the first time that, um, the revolting man and I, uh, actually started talking. I had had a severe panic attack. That had left me pretty crippled in a way, mentally and spiritually. I'm sure it's probably more on the spiritual side than the mental side. However you divide those those lines. Um, and it was a couple months prior to our first... Um, our first... Uh, I want to think of an, a word other than hookup. Um, but when we first started talking. And the first time we talked, he said get over it pretty much like that and a weight was lifted so ladies your husband has power in the spiritual realm he has power in the spiritual realm God has given him this authority over you and your demons so to speak I'm not sure how exactly it works there's been other times that our marriage um, there was a time when when I was in labor with one of our chil- with one of our sons and um, having extreme panic and fear, and he prayed over me, and everything was released. Everything was released. And so, you know, I don't know how exactly it works, but it, it does. He is um, he is equipped for this, and he has he has certain authority over the 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 spiritual realm is as far as you are concerned. And I think that is in our best interest as wives to, to let him handle it. And if we're having a hard time doing that, I'm, I'm pretty sure he has the power to speak over us and to release us from some of that worry and doubt. Um, I, I hope some of that made sense. And, um, as far as the other, yeah, I think I covered everything. Um, you know, start a garden, for practical reasons and for spiritual reasons and all of the above get outside. Oh, I know the last thing I wanted to touch on. Um, and I did touch on this in my little short video, the Sabbath, we need to be resting on the Sabbath. And you know, if you're not, if you're not Torah observant, um, you might want to look into it. It's, uh, 24 hours of rest. And the reason I think God instituted the rules around it is because he knew we were not going to rest. He knew we were going to go around and try to figure out what all we can be doing to keep busy and um, not have that time for our bodies really to decompress and our spirits and our minds. And it's important. One day a week, um, 24 hours of rest. And I don't believe that the modern uh, Christian knows how to do it. I, I'm pretty sure that it's, uh, you got to get back to the way he, he designed the Sabbath, you know, he instituted it and it was the first, the, uh, the first, uh, part, the, the first rule he laid down. I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, yep. Right there in the beginning, Genesis. So anyways, um, look into that. Definitely. And don't forget your your vitamin C. And if you want to learn more, check out Suzanne Humphreys. Um, There's a couple other people that I could recommend also. But um, be blessed. Stay safe. Don't let fear ruin your or run run you. Don't don't let fear ruin your your quality of life. Um, Focus on on the things above. Focus on your family and. let your husband worry about the big things. (laughs) All right. Um, I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.